Hi guys, uh, this week I'm going to be making a engine starter. So I've been in the possession of uh, my mate Chris's engine starter now for about a year. So thank you Chris. Um, but it's about time I gave it back to him I think. Um, so I'm looking at making one. Now this is a bell I got off a, I think it's an old 1200 uh, gearbox I had which was uh, damaged in a crash. Um, if you are going to cut one off, let's say you can do it with an angle grinder, just be careful you get magnesium flashes from the, the powder uh, if you go a bit, a bit quick with it. Um, and it does tend to grab, so just be careful when you do do it, but a, a thin slitting disc should eventually get your way through there. Um, you can also use um, Type 2 bellizings which unbolt, I believe. Um, if it's a 1200 bellows like this one, I think it is, um, the 1600 flywheel won't quite fit in there, so you'll have to clear and sit around here, um, as you do with any engine upgrades kind of thing when you put on, on the 1200 box. Um, but we'll check for that when we get to that point. Um, I've got a bunch of wires. Came with an old greasy trailer. Um, some bits from, a, from an old Fiat, some engine uh, battery and connectors. So I'm hoping I've got enough bits and pieces there to do the job without um, buying any more. Got my son's drinking bottle. Made of metal. Um, I've ordered a part for the bottom to tap into for the fuel. Just got a bit of old fuel hose, which hopefully will do the job. Um, I don't know where that bit's gone, as always I order things and lose them. Um, but say it's metal and I can lift the top so I've got a, it doesn't create a vacuum and I can get a bit of, a, a bit of air going through there as well. Um, old starter, unknown origins, don't know if it works. I'll give it a clean, hopefully it will be a bit of a quick test. Uh, it's a bit more this side but I'm sure for what I need, for the short term it'll be, it'll be fine. And I have some switches which got off eBay. Um, I can't remember how much they were, I think it was about seven, eight, seven quid for the pair. Um, I got a third one because they sent me the wrong one. <laughs> um, so ideally you want to be using probably a relay to do it, but I think it would be alright. Um, these are 25 amp switches, which I'm hoping will be fine, but if we run into trouble then uh, we'll change it. One's an on off switch, and the other one's just the one to activate the starter. And I think that's pretty much everything I've got, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it all up now. I'm not going to make you watch that, so I'll come back to it, it's all nice and clean, I'll show you what I've got, and then we'll start building it. I've spent about uh, 25 minutes just cleaning everything up, uh, with the angle grinder and a wire brush. came up really well actually, and I blingy, I like that. Uh, so it's cleaned all the, as much, well, the majority of grime off, and then just a bit of WD-40 to clean off the last few bits and pieces. Right, before we start building, I just want to run through the vague circuits we're going to be creating. Uh, I know the electrics is something that puts a lot of people off, but it really is quite simple stuff. Um, so first of all, we have our main power feed from the battery. Um, this cable is about a metre and a half long, which is actually quite handy, because having the battery a little bit more remote away from the starter and the engine means you don't have to move the engine and the battery together if you need to shuffle things around. Uh, so it does come in handy. Um, that big chunky cable will go to the back of the starter and the solenoid. And I'll connect to the, the back, big nut there. Um, so that powers the solenoid and then ultimately will power the starter motor as, as well. So from the, the nut, we're going to spur off and we're going to feed three different things. Uh, the first one is the starter, or the starter switch. Uh, so basically the power will go into this, it'll come back out again, and it goes back to the starter motor uh, onto the little spade. Uh, that effectively uh, activates the solenoid and then fires up the big boy. So that is our go switch. And then a separate switch will power up from, uh, say, from the same pack of cable. Uh, it's going to go into this switch and then it's going to come out of this switch and then go to the positive on the coil. Um, so this effectively will be our ignition live. It'll give us a spark at the engine and hopefully uh, the ability to start it. Uh, what that means is we can switch that off, turn the engine over, which will come in handy for when we want to build up oil pressure. Uh, now, just like in a Beetle, I'm going to have a third wire uh, feed to this LED. I'm hoping I can use an LED with uh, low, um, low current. I'm not sure if it'll cause problems, but fingers crossed it won't. Uh, so to the LED, and then that will go to the old pressure switch on the engine. Um, and just like um, on, your, on your bug, when you turn in over the engine, um, it'll go off once you've got oil pressure. Um, so that means I can turn the switch off, turn the engine over until I've got oil pressure, and before I want to fire it, uh, when I've got oil pressure, Ignition live, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, I personally am going to have a, another circuit coming off this switch as well. 
Um, I personally don't have a mechanical uh, fuel pump on my engine, on, on the engine I'm trying to start at least. Um, so I'll have a second feed from this switch and that'll go to the electric fuel pump. Um, and again, that means without trying to start it, I can switch that on and I can prime the carbs to make sure there's plenty of fuel in them before we try and start it. Uh, so we have a, a feed to that switch, to that switch. I'm going to do this one separately as a, as a third circuit. It's all simple stuff. And the big black cable, uh, nice and easy, it's just your earth, so everything's going to go through the, the bellhousing effectively. Um, and that will go, as I say, will attach to one of the studs, and then that goes back to the battery. Okay, we're built up to the point where we need to start doing some wiring now. Uh, so I'll just run through. So we've got the starter motor on, um, still got to put the bolt through, which I can use a standard bolt, because the usual slotted headed one's gone missing. <laughs> I always lose that one, I'm not sure why it, it seems to go into black holes. Um, when I put the starter on, unfortunately it started falling over, which is really irritating, you couldn't just stand it up. Um, I did try putting the cradle on, but that didn't help, so I actually made a couple of little brackets using an old kettle handle and a, um, a coat hook. But the, uh, it does work, it's nice and sturdy now. Um, the switch bar here is just a, another bracket from something, one of the first things I found to be honest. works really nice. Um, I've got my switches so I can stand from this side and switch on. Got my uh, my LED in the middle, which say we yet to test see if that works, and then I can start it. No doubt this hand's going to be busy fiddling with carburetors and uh, throttles when I get to work. Um, the bottle's kind of temporary on there at the minute. Um, the part the uh, fuel feed's still got to arrive in the post, um, so I've got to drill and tap that. But that's probably where I'm going to fit it. Might spray it black though, because uh, I don't think SpongeBob looks too good. <laughs> And then on the back, I've um, got the uh, electric fuel pump, which if you've got a standard fuel pump in your engine, you don't, you don't need to worry about that. It's just one for me. Um, but yeah, it's looking, uh, looking pretty good. Um, if you are using a 1200 bell housing like this, like this one is, um, and I say I mentioned about the, the flywheels on 1600s and stuff, uh, you'll need clearance for it, for it to work in here. Um, I didn't realise, but this one's actually already been done. Um, so if you can see there, it's kind of been ground out. Um, it's been ground around here uh, and around there. Now, I can't remember if this is my bell house or if my old engine I broke or if it's one I got. So I don't actually remember doing it like that, I'll be perfectly honest with you. But uh, when you try and fit it, you'll see where it crashes and say just take a little bit off if you need to. So I'll uh, start wiring and uh, I'll try and show you where all the, the wires run uh, as best I can. Okay, so our main power lead is going to connect to the, uh, the back of the solenoid there. Um, from this we've taken three power sources. And those wires, one goes to the toggle switch, one goes to the now bulb, and one goes to the ignition live on off switch. Um, I sorted it to a bulb, basically the LED wasn't 12 volt as I thought it was, um, and it didn't last long when I tested it. <laughs> and so that's the only thing I could find, it's a side light from something. Um, It'll do for now. Um, we've got the, the main power lead which is now bolted onto the, the back of the solenoid uh, and the main return which is on one of the studs on the side of the engine there. Uh, just give it a good clean around there to make sure I've got a good earth. Uh, the switch which we saw the live feed to now has a return. I did it in purple just so you could see it, it's not any particular code. Um, and that goes to the back of the solenoid there. The oil light has a line with just a spade on and that will plug into the uh, oil pressure switch on the side of the engine and the ignition live uh, switch that's uh, the black one, again no particular code, it's just a heavier duty wire um, and that goes to the positive on the coil and then the one that you probably won't have to bother if you've got your own fuel pump on there uh, but that just feeds my electric fuel pump um, and that's from the switch as well um, the other thing I've done that deviates from what I mentioned is I decided to put an inline fuse um, on the ignition live switch just in case I uh, end up shorting something out uh, or there's a problem. Um, so it's just a 10 amp fuse, I'm sure will be enough. Okay, fuel installed. Uh, so I've got the bottle on. Um, so I just drilled and tapped it. So it just, uh, it's got a little outlet on there. Um, it goes around into the inlet and then up through a filter. And then that's going to go to a T-piece, uh, which will feed my twin carbs. Battery at the ready. Uh, so one of the reasons for having long wires. Let's say it's really handy. Okay, I've just uh, jammed a, a drill bit in there just to test the circuit. So the, the switch, the, the oil pressure light should come on 
uh, generally so it should be on now effectively if it's connected which it is um, I've had to swap the bulb out again because I had trouble with the holder shorting on the uh, on the housing um, so that's the third option so it's a temporary one until I can get something else sorted but it'll do um, if we try ignition uh, the fuel pump should kick in which it does um, I can't really test the coil uh, circuit at a minute but that's there hopefully I didn't short out and then the scary one <laughs> uh, there's been a couple of teething problems um, biggest one is sealing the bottle um, so basically every time I put the bottle on it, it, it sprang a leak um, I think ultimately the issue is the, the bottom of the aluminium bottle's just not got enough meat on it to uh, put a decent thread in there um, so no matter how much PTFE you put in there it, it just gets by um, and then ultimately I stripped the thread out anyway. Um, I did manage to get a nut onto the actual thread of the uh, the bobbed end um, and put a seal on and that seems to have fixed it. Um, also if you have one of these glass fuel filters which is not something I've used before um, the, there's a thread through the middle of it which clamps the glass and I didn't realise this but it can come loose um, so I put fuel in and again it came out all around the filter and I, you have to clamp the glass down make sure there's a, the seal's tight uh, which is a new one to me um, so I think we're ready to go, we're going to give it a try um, it should show that it turns the engine however I don't know if the battery is strong enough to actually start it um, and I've not got a decent battery knocking around to, to use unfortunately to, to actually fire it but we'll give it a try, see where we get to and uh, Fingers crossed. Okay, I'm going to prime the carbs all being well. Woo! Okay, see if we can uh, get the build oil pressure up. Oil pressure. Right, I don't really want to stand over the top of this carbon because it farts. <laughs> Get your fingers crossed. Rock and roll!